Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at Schedule M1, which is a topic covered in a corporate income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, and it's covered heavily, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on a professional as well on a personal level. Professionally, you could LinkedIn with me on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, you should create a LinkedIn account. LinkedIn account is good for networking purposes as well as growing your professional network. Facebook, if you're a Facebook user, like my Facebook page, you want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. Please subscribe to my YouTube, like my YouTube if you like them, share them, put them in playlist, Thank you very much. Okay. I also have a website and I'm on my website. I do have some time CPA offers, for example, right now. And this is new. This is groundbreaking. Becker at last is offering unlimited access. And if you go to my website and you put this code, if you use my link and you put this code, you will save an extra $495. And you're talking about Becker unlimited access. This is unprecedented unprecedented you want to take you want to make sure you take advantage of this this could be just a limited offer or you can get the 18 month access part um, at 433.93 so what is a schedule m1 what is the big idea the big idea is this the irs they want to see the difference between your gap income and irs income what does that mean it means for gap here's the thing they don't want to see too much income for gap they don't want to see too much profit so simply put they don't want to see something like this you have net income for gap and losses for irs they want to see what is the difference what is the discrep discrepancy between your gap and irs net income because that difference is what's making you not pay taxes for the irs whatever those differences are if that difference is constantly wide you'll be audited like what's going on okay um so yes it's gonna be uh, they're gonna be a difference because gap gap did use different rules than the irs but the irs wants to see why that difference is and on schedule m1 we will reconcile those differences so that's the big idea and if you remember from intermediate accounting accounting for income taxes if you already took intermediate accounting and studied accounting for income taxes this is going to be a plus for you in this session simply put it's going to make your life easier if you if you haven't took intermediate accounting that's fine we'll go slowly with this but if you want to see accounting for income taxes go to my intermediate accounting course and i believe that's chapter don't quote me on this i believe 19 i believe it's 19 okay so corporation must reconcile financial accounting with taxable income on schedule M m1 that's that's it we need to show we go from book accounting you know the starting point is book accounting gap so the assumption is we prepare gap first then from gap we have to go and show what's the net income for the irs now, common reconciliation item would include, there's a lot of reconciliation items, but some of them, like, they're very common. For example, federal income taxes per books. What does that mean? I will show you a more comprehensive example. This is real quick. For example, when you're computing your GAAP income statement, you have your revenues minus expenses, and you're going to deduct also federal income tax right this is what you learn every time you pay you prepare your financial statement for gap you deduct federal income tax you'll get to your net income then from net income you're going to prepare a reconciliation guess what this federal income tax that you deducted to come up to net income when you do the reconciliation you have to do the opposite you're going to have to add it back because that number is not deductible for tax purposes think about it you cannot deduct your federal income tax on your federal income tax okay so not deductible therefore what you have to do you have to add back and don't worry i'm going to show you a more detailed example we're going to work a couple examples so this is one common item always federal income taxes per books gets added okay why because it was deducted another item is net capital loss fully deduction for fully fully deductible for gap so what happened is this when you're computing revenue minus expenses also you can deduct all your capital losses because for gap if you have a million dollar of capital losses you can deduct all of capital losses gap doesn't care well guess what for tax purposes your capital losses can offset your capital gain 
And any excess, you cannot use it. So if you have any excess capital losses, if you have capital losses, let's assume you had $100,000 in capital losses. Well, guess what? Capital losses are not deductible for tax purposes. You have to add back capital losses, what we call them to be more specific, excess capital losses. It means capital losses and excess of your excess capital losses. Okay, access capital losses. Also, we have to, if you have income reported for tax, but not for book income, for example, prepaid income or vice versa, what does that mean? So sometimes you're gonna have a difference between tax and gap. What's that difference? Something like this. You received income, prepaid income upfront. Well, you're gonna debit cash for, ca for tax and credit income or credit revenue, basically credit income. This is like $10,000. Okay, in a particular year. For GAP, you're gonna debit cash and credit unearned revenue, 10,000 and 10,000. So notice what happened that particular year. You received 10,000 in cash, it was taxable, and GAP wasn't taxable. So guess what, you're gonna have to reconcile those two. Now this is year one. In year two, the opposite will happen. In year two, you will have no income because you accounted for the whole income. Then you will start to account for the income for gap. Then you will debit unearned revenue. And you credit revenue. Now revenue is on gap, but it's not on, on your taxes. Therefore, you have to do a reconciliation. Also, let me clear all of this. Don't worry, you're gonna have more detailed example with numbers. Access deducted for book income, but not tax. For example, when you did your books for GAP, you contributed $200,000 for contribution. You deducted the whole thing. When it comes to tax purposes of this amount, because you're limited at 10% limitation, you can only take, uh, I don't know, 10,000. Guess what, there's a $90,000 difference. $190,000 difference, not $90,000 difference. So how do you account for that? Again, as I said, we're gonna work examples to show you how this all work. Okay, let me take a look at an Excel sheet here. I have this, this Excel sheet here. So let's take a look at these figures. So don't worry, this is not an official income statement, but this is an income statement that's gonna illustrate the concept. Let's start with the first line. We have revenues of half a million. Where did that came from? It just, it's given. I just made this number up, given, okay? Um, we have tax exempt interest of, uh, of uh, 5,000. We have life insurance proceeds of 50,000, which are those additional income. So this is our income. So this is income. So we have three sources of income, okay? We have other operating expenses, 450,000. Again, this is given. We have excess capital losses of 2,000. This is a loss. Premium paid for life insurance, 2,600. It's an expense. I put the expenses in negative um, for illustration purposes. Interest on tax exempt bond, $500. That's also an expense. And we had to pay federal income tax of 10,500. We, we, we did not necessarily pay them, but Federal income tax, 10,500, that's an expense. So net income is, for this company, is 89,400 per gap, okay? So this is basically a typical income statement, revenues minus expenses, all right? Now, what do we have to do? Now I'm gonna go from gap net income to IRS income. So how am I gonna do this? Well. Revenues of half a million, what I would say, those revenues are both taxable for, so this one is, this 500, this half a million dollar is revenue for both, IRS and GAP. So this half a million is treated for both. Tax exempt interest income, well, tax exempt interest income of $5,000. What do we know about tax exempt interest income? Well, what do we know about tax exempt interest income? We know it's not taxable. Well, if it's not taxable, guess what? This 5,000 is accounted for here. It's accounted for, I'm gonna make this number, highlight this number in yellow. So this 5,000 here is being counted here. So what do I need to do to come up with my income taxes? I need to deduct my $5,000. So I need to deduct $5,000 
I need to deduct this $5,000 from the $89,400. And deduction here is good. Every time I deduct the number, it's good. It's mean not taxable. So for the $5,000 in interest income, I deduct from gap, from gap income. And that's good. When I deduct it, it's gonna, it's not gonna be taxable for me. Okay, I deduct it, so it lower my taxes. Okay, so we're done with tax, uh, tax exempt interest income. Life insurance proceeds. We received fifty thousand dollar of life insurance proceeds. Guess what? For gap, I include this income. There's no reason not to include it with my company's income. Well, for that fifty thousand dollar is not taxable for IRS purposes. Well, if it's not taxable, I need to deduct the fifty thousand dollar. So notice here, I deducted the fifty thousand dollar. That's good too, because it's not taxable. Remember, life insurance proceeds when the company is the beneficiary, that's not deductible. I'm done with that. Other operating expenses, I just made this number up, 450,000. These expenses are both the same, both the same for GAAP and IRS. What I'm trying to say is the expenses here, this 450,000, they are treated both the same, so I don't need to make any adjustment. Excess capital losses of 2000 Well, guess what? I have excess capital losses. For gap purposes, guess what? I can deduct as much capital losses as I want to. Well, guess what? For IRS, this is not deductible. Well, it's not deductible. What does that mean if it's not deductible? Because excess losses, I cannot... Lo Capital losses can offset capital gain, but any access, I cannot take this here. I have to carry forward. What does that mean? It means this $2,000 reduced my gap income. Well, guess what? For IRS, I have to add back access loss, excess loss. And this is, from, from a tax perspective, not good. In other words, if I add back $2,000, I'm paying more taxes on this, okay? Because I have to add it back. I have to add it back. Premium paid for life insurance. Well, I paid 2,600 for my life insurance and for gap purposes, that's an expense. Well, guess what? For IRS purposes, that's not deductible. Well, not deductible means, it means this 2,600 reduced my gap income to 89,400. If I'm going backward to my IRS income, I have to add back premium paid, premium, premium paid, premium paid. Okay, well, that's not good. Not good. I have to pay more taxes. More taxes. Not good. Okay. Interest on tax exempt bond. Well, guess what? I paid 500 on interest on tax exempt bond for gap. That's an expense. That's an interest expense. Well, guess what? What do, you, what do we know about this interest on tax exempt bond? That's not deductible for IRS, right? Because because we are borrowing this money to buy a tax exempt uh, investment. Well, guess what? The interest is not deductible okay if it's not deductible i have to add back interest oops interest interest on tax exempt bonds i have to add it back when i add it back i add back 500 that's not good why i have to pay more taxes because i you know i lost the deduction basically reconciling and this is the most obvious one. I deducted 10,500 in something called federal income tax to come up with 89,400. Well, guess what? I cannot deduct the 10,500 for taxes. This is not deductible. And this is the most obvious one. Hopefully you will, you will, you will try to get it. This is the most obvious one in my opinion. Guess what? If I cannot, I have to add back my federal income tax. Now, if I take 89,400, which is gap gap income, add back the excess capital loss, add back the premium paid on life insurance, add back the interest on tax exempt bond, deduct the 5,000 interest, uh, uh, municipal interest, that's not taxable, deduct the, uh, the life insurance proceeds, which are not deductible, the life insurance proceeds, life insurance proceeds, which are not taxable, well, add back my federal income tax, which is not good. I have to, you know, I have to add it back. I have to, it means I have to pay more taxes. Okay. All in all, my income tax per taxes is $50,000. $50,000. I hope, I, 
I hope you can see this. I hope you can see how I did this. Now, now I'm going to take this information and show it to you in in uh, in a schedule M1. So this is what a schedule M1 would look like. So this is the problem that it was over there. So they gave us net income per books, 89,000. Uh, taxable income, they already gave us taxable income 50,000, they gave us federal income taxes, they gave us interest uh, income from tax exempt bond, you know, interest paid on loan, the proceeds which were used to purchase tax exempt bond, muni bond, life insurance proceeds 50,000 as a result of the death of a key employee, premium paid on key employee, this, is, this was an expense, access capital loss. So here's what we do. So this is what Schedule M1 looks like. First, you start with net income per books. Net income per books is right there. Net income per books, good, done. Then federal income tax per books, that's always pre-printed, you add it. So this number here, remember we add, plus 10,500, okay? Access of capital losses over capital gain. This is also printed kind of because it's those two are very common. The IRS pre-print them. This item here, we have to add back. Okay, because it's a, we took it as a deduction for tax purposes, not a legitimate, not acceptable deduction. That's that. Then, then uh, income subject to tax not recorded on the books. We don't have anything for line four. Line five, we have expenses recorded on the books this year, not deducted on the IRS return. So those are expenses recorded on the books. They could be depreciation. They could be charitable contribution. They could be travel and entertainment. Well, what are those? Well, we have premium on life insurance, 2,600. Those, they, we deducted them for the books, but they're not deducted for tax purposes. Therefore, we have to add them. And we paid $500 in, um, I'm sorry, we uh, yes, we paid uh, interest on a tax exempt bond. We borrowed money to buy tax exempt bond, $500. So together, 3,100. Therefore, this is also added. Therefore, we'll take 89,400 plus 10,500 plus 2,000 plus 3,100 will give us 105. So basically, we are done with let me just highlight the items we just got done with. We took care of this item. We took care of this item. We took care of this item. And we took care of this item. Okay. Now, we'll go to line seven. Line seven read income reported. Income reported on the books this year, not included on the return. Well, we reported on the books $5,000 of interest income. Well, guess what? That's not taxable. We need to deduct it. Okay, minus. We also report, we also had $50,000 of insurance proceeds, which is not taxable. Well, 50,000 plus 5,000 equal to 55,000. Notice the tax exempt interest is pre-printed. Okay, the tax exempt interest is pre-printed. Therefore, that's, 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 uh, so that's minus 55,000. So if we net them out, we'll come to 50,000. It's, it's what I showed you. That's what I showed you on the Excel sheet earlier, which I showed you on the Excel sheet earlier. Okay, so on the Excel sheet, we came up with 50,000 in a different way, but this is Schedule M M1. Okay, let's take a look at some items to see if we know how do we know how do we deal with those items. Okay, so Schedule M1 of Form 1120 is used to reconcile financial accounting net income with taxable income reported on the corporation income tax. That's that's good enough. So we'll take net income per books plus some addition minus some subtraction, which is what we saw earlier, equal to taxable income. Classify the following items as either addition or sub subtraction in Schedule M1. Well, life insurance proceeds re received upon the death of a covered executive. So the company received life insurance proceeds. How would the company treat this for GAP? For GAP, we say that's income. We GAP, we say that's income. So that, that, that amount is included here. So what do we need to do with it then? Well, we need to subtract it. So when we go from GAP to IRS, we'll need to subtract it because that income, let's assume the, the this was $30,000. Well, this $30,000 was included already in net income per books. Then we need to deduct it because for taxes, that amount is not taxable. Therefore, this, this one, we need to subtract, subtract. Okay, we need to deduct. Tax depreciation, tax depreciation, and excess of book depreciation. Let me show you what this looks like. Four, we have tax, and we let's start with gap. It doesn't matter. We have gap, 
and we have IRS. And here we're saying for gap for this particular year, we debited depreciation expense 5,000. We credited accumulated depreciation. I'm just making this number up 5,000. Okay. Now for tax purposes, and this we were using the straight line, just kind of just to make it a little bit more realistic. For I for IRS purposes, what we did is uh, what we did is we deducted so the depreciation expense, tax depreciation, and excess of book depreciation. So this was uh, make it seven thousand, and accumulated depreciation is seven thousand. So notice here, tax depreciation, uh, tax depreciation is an excess. Well, two thousand dollar in excess. So this is we used makers. Okay, just kind of just to make it realistic. So we have we have to add. I'm sorry, we have to deduct, and that's in a sense add to our taxes. We have to deduct. Okay. So simply put, when we computed net income per books, we did not take enough. The, depreciation we did not take enough depreciation for taxes we did not take enough depreciation for taxes how much we did not take enough 2000 because taxes depreciation is an excess therefore what we have to do we have to deduct again subtract $2000 I just made this number up just to kind of make it more realistic for you therefore we have to deduct an additional two thousand dollar and that's not good every time we deduct it means our taxes are going uh, every time we deduct it means our taxes are going up okay I'm sorry if we deduct our taxes are going down which is good it means we took we need to take more depreciation but we need to deduct an additional two thousand okay we need to deduct an additional two thousand because we did not deduct enough Federal income taxes per books, hopefully you know this. We always, we always add this because this is a deduction. This is a deduction we took that's not deductible for tax purposes. Not deductible. We cannot. Therefore, we have we have to add. We have to add. Capital loss and access of capital gain. This is easy. We also have to add back because for tax purposes, we cannot take this access of capital losses capital losses that's an excess of capital gain it cannot be deducted therefore if we have any sorry about that we have to add back charitable contribution and excess of income limitation so for gap just kind of to give you some examples in gap we said we have charity expense just kind of make some numbers up of 50,000 credit cash 50,000 so we can we can deduct all of this when it comes to the IRS there is a limitation and based on the limitation I'm just gonna make this up charity expense we can only take 20,000 cash 20,000 what does that mean it means we have $30,000 we have $30,000 difference in the net income per books. So what do we have to do with that $30,000? Add it back. Basically, add it back to net income per books. Basically, taken away that deduction. Added that back means taken away the deduction. Premium paid on life insurance policies covering executives, the corporation is beneficiary. Well, if we pay premium on life insurance, guess what? For GAP, say, okay, you can deduct this. It's, it's an expense for you. When it comes to IRS, say no, because this insurance covering executives, you cannot deduct it for you cannot deduct it for uh, uh, for IRS purposes. And, uh, you know, simply put, we have an expense here. Let's make the expense 10000 Here, there is no expense. Okay? What does that mean? It means go back and add $10,000 to your net income per books. So your taxable income is higher. Okay? So hopefully you can see those items. Okay? Let's take a look at this example. Okay, this example, they want us to complete a Schedule M1. Well, we will complete Schedule M1, but first let's work this example with kind of, just kind of, just work it with common sense. Then we would look at the, uh, we would look at the, uh, we would look at the example. We would look at Schedule M1. So we are giving net income per books, 205.50. This is our starting point. So, two. 
0.0550. Federal income tax expense per books. Well, what do we do with this? Well, we always add back because we took we took the deduction. So federal income tax per books, this was deducted for gap. Well, for IRS, you cannot deduct it. Therefore, you have to add it back. Add back 55,650. Done. Tax exempt interest. Well, tax exempt interest income, 4,500. In other words, we receive 4,500 of interest income. Well, good. If we receive 4,500, that's excellent. For gap, we always add it for gap. We always add it for gap. Any income we have, we add for gap plus for gap. Well, when we go to the IRS, we cannot take it. We have to deduct because it's not taxable, which is good. 4,500, we have to subtract it, which is good. It means it's not taxable for us. That's done. Maker's depreciation in excess of straight line depreciation. So here what we have is um, maker's is tax depreciation. Hopefully you know this. So tax depreciation in excess of straight line, in excess of the gap. So we have 7,200. What do we have to do now? We have to deduct, deduct, deduct an additional 7,200 because we did not take enough straight line depreciation. Done. Okay. Simply put, we took on the, in other words, on the, on the financial statement on gap, when we computed net income, our depreciation was... 7,200 less than makers. Well, guess what? Then we have to take additional depreciation, okay? Sometimes they could, they could give you the opposite. Sometimes they'll tell you financial accounting is an excess, of, uh, an excess of makers. So be careful. Oh yes, let me just make sure you do this. This, this problem could, this issue could be, or they could give you the example where straight line happens to be greater than makers or they'll tell you gap depreciation is greater than makers then you'll have the opposite if it's, if the gap is more then you will add okay but here they're telling you makers is more than gap okay we're done with this access of capital loss over capital gain 9400 what does that mean it means for gap you deducted this amount for gap you deducted this amount for gap that's good for gap you can deduct it well guess what for IRS, that's not a deduction. Therefore, you have to add back 9,400, okay? Non-deductibles, meals, and entertainment. Well, what does that mean? It means in your income tax return, you deducted meals and entertainment. However, 5,500 of those are not deductible. It means you have to add them back. Add them back means not good. Add them back means your taxable income is going to go up. Okay, because remember, you could only deduct 50% of meals and entertainment. So this portion was not deductible. Well, guess what? You have to put it back. Okay, not deductible. But for gap, just from a gap perspective, this was a minus for gap. So this, this non-deductible meal were minus for gap. So we deducted it for gap. Get IRS, we cannot deduct it. Interest on loan to purchase tax exempt bond. So we incur interest on loan to buy tax exempt bond. For gap, that's fine. Doesn't matter what why, why did we do the why did we in, incur the interest? It's an interest, it's deductible. Well, for gap, this interest on loan to, to buy tax exempt bond is not is not deductible. Therefore, we add it back, and as a result, it's going to increase our taxable income. Now we are ready to compute. Now we are ready to compute our our uh, our taxable income. So we're going to go with two hundred five zero fifty. We add back the fifty five six fifty. We subtract four thousand five hundred. We deduct. 7,200, the additional depreciation. Then we add, sorry, we add 9,400. We add back 5,500 for the meals and we add back the interest on the tax exempt bond, which will give us 265,000. 265,000. And I believe that's the correct answer. Now we're going to take this information and prepare schedule m1 so you see how this all works but i just did it this way so you know how to analyze it okay first this is a schedule m1 you're going to start with net income net income was 20550 then federal income tax per books that's that's pre-printed because that's always you're going to add that back so basically this section in it adding 
55,650, 55,650. Then access of capital losses over capital gain, that's also pre-printed and we happen to have 9,400. Now we're gonna look to see if we have any income subject to tax not recorded on the books. Do we have any income that we need to tax this year but not recorded on the books? Not applicable for this example. We just don't have any income that's taxed. For example, prepaid income could be taxed but not but not recorded on the books. We don't have any, okay? Now, expense recorded on the books this year, not deducted on this return. So we have we took some expenses on the books, on GAAP, but they're not deducted on the income tax return. Depreciation, that's not the case. Charitable contribution, that's not the case. Travel and entertainment, yes, we took 5,500 of charitable contribution on the books, which are not deductible for tax purposes. And remember, we had the interest on on bond, on muni bond, muni to be more specific, muni bond, that was 1,100. Now we itemize them and that's 6,600. Now we take, we add all of those, 20550 plus 55,650 plus 94, 9,400 plus 6,600, that's gonna give us 276,700. We're done with the addition. Let's go to the other side. Now we're gonna look for income recorded on the books this year, not included on this return. And usually they have tax exempt interest and we do have tax exempt interest of 4,500. Now those are not deductible. Now we have to deduct this. We have to subtract this. That's the only thing that we have. That's 4,500. Deduction on this return, not charged against the book income this year. For example, here we have depreciation. It means those are deduction we had more tax depreciation. We had more tax depreciation than gap, 7,200. We did not have any charitable contribution for the scenario. And that's it, 7,000, 7,200. Let's pull the calculator again. Okay, now we're gonna take we're gonna take 276, 276, 700 and deduct from it 4,500, which is the uh, interest, municipal interest, deduct from it the additional depreciation and that's gonna give us 265,000. And this is the same answer that we got earlier. And this is schedule M1. Okay, now we're going to do M2 and M3 in the next recording. Well, if you have any questions, any comments about this topic, this is an interesting topic covered on the CPA exam, uh, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. If you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard, it's worth it. Good luck.